सहनावतु सहनौ घुनक्तु सह वीर्यंकवाहये तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिद्विषा वह ओ शाशा Now, the the text is giving us a very beautiful set of verses, which talk about how to do this vichar. Vichar means inquiry, and of course, it is understood the inquiry is done in a in a. Uh, along with the teacher in a classroom kind of an environment along with the teacher it is done and so that is that is understood and then uh, we have the uh, uh, the verses which put this inquiry we already saw that which run this inquiry through Jiva, to the concepts of Jiva, Jagat, and Ish. Okay, that we have seen. This is just a catching. So this we have already seen. There is there is such a thing called Jiva, which is I, which is all all other Jivas too, but then which is basically I. That is the Jiva. Then there is something that I relate to, and this whole world of names, forms, etc. That is called Jagat. All right, and then there is, if if we talk about the jagat, thoughts about the creator of the jagat are never too far away, and that is what is called ish. So jiva jagat ishvara. This kind of a, uh, this is a traditional way in which the um, in which the analysis is done. Jiva vichara, jagat vichara, vichara, and ishvara vichara. So we saw that in uh, uh, in verse number twelve. What is that? Koham kathami dham jatam ovai karta sya vidyate upada nam ki masti ha vichara so yami drisha ha. The vichara should be like this. Koham, who am I? Kathami dham. How did this jagat come into being? And kovai karta sya vidyate. Who, who made this jagat? Upadanam kimasti, and what is the raw material from which the jagat has been made? This is the this is what is called the Viva jagat Ishvara vichara. These are the three doorways through which the self inquiry is done. Okay. Then what what is that? Uh, uh, then what is the material of this jagat? Then in verse thirteen we saw that it is Jiva vichara. Jiva vichara means who is this I? Then upon analysis, I find na aham bhuta ganaha deha. I am not the assemblage of the five elements. This body, I am not this body, which is an assemblage of five elements. Na aham chakshaganas ganas tatha. Na aham cha aksha ganas tatha. So akshagana means the sense organs. I am not the group of sense organs. Vetad vilakshana ha kastit. I am something different from all of this. This is how the inquiry proceeds. So in verse number thirteen, we have G. We have an example of jiva vichara. And now in verse number fourteen, we are going to um uh, in um uh, verse number fourteen and fifteen. We are going to do what is called jagat vichara. Now the thing is, it's not going to go in a linear fashion. It's going to go back and forth. Then we can come back to the jiva vichara because after all, jiva and jagat are um, uh, are connected and they are together. So let us uh, let us look at this here. Uh, 
न अहम भूतगण देह या सो हियर दिस वन इज वर्स नंबर थर्टीन दिस इज जीव विचारा वर्स नंबर फोर्टीन एंड फिफ्टीन आर वॉट इज कॉल्ड जगद विचार अज्ञान प्रभव सर्व ज्ञान न प्रवीयते अज्ञान प्रभव सर्व ज्ञान न प्रवीयते संकल्पो विविध कर्ता विचार सोयमी दृश संकल्पो विविध कर्ता विचार सोयमी दृश सूक्ष्म सदव्ययम सूक्ष्म सदव्ययम यथाधीना विचार सोयमी दृश So, very nice and slightly unusual way of doing Jagat Vichar. So, when we talk about the Jagat, there are two things, <coughs> excuse me, two things that come to mind. Two things that come to mind. What are these two things? The first thing is that oh you know this this is beautiful that is one if one is having a, a good day then a person comes to that conclusion this is fantastic this is beautiful this is lovely this is great and then what then meaning there is there are so many things that delight the senses so many names forms and uh, and colors shapes sizes this is just wonderful in fact the jagat itself can be a huge entertainment without needing television television is also a kind of a jagat only <laughs> it's a contrived jagat and uh, uh, and then uh, you know that is you, you just look at other people's lives whether it's reality tv or fictional tv you just look at other people's lives so the television movies are also just a jagat within the jagat it's the jagat of somebody's imagination but here we uh, uh, you know the jagat itself is like a movie why because it keeps moving it's never the same it keeps moving and moving and moving and moving and moving and moving all the time it's moving Yeah, so the jagat is never the same, or ever moving, all the time in motion. And then, so the, we see that that is the first thing we know and we understand about the jagat. What is the next thing? The next thing we understand about the jagat is that it is intelligent. First thing is that it has it. It's just magically there's so many things. Uh, so there is the sun, moon, meteors, and if meteors are there. meteor showers are not far behind and then now uh, suddenly as we as we read in the news last week some uh, what is that somebody's house was pelted with a hot rock it turned out to be a meteor it it hit the house and then fell on the ground a big meteor a uh, big means this big and uh, so like this so there are celestial bodies and then there are so many things this is the first thing that we see about the jagat that it is objectifiable with our sense organs the next thing we understand about the jagat is that it is an intelligent creation that is the second thing intelligent creation because it is not uh, it is making something you know it is intelligent there is a there is a krama behind it even if you look at the darwinian uh, theory of evolution and all but still even there there is a krama what came first what came next etc single cellular animal then multicellular animals 
then finally the human being and all these things. So there is a krama. That it seems to be extremely orderly. There is so much order in the universe. The jagat is so beautiful because it is just full of order. And in that order, you, you are struck by the knowledge. You are struck by the vast amount of knowledge it takes to coordinate the various aspects of this world. Not an easy thing. Just take marriage between two people. <laughs> so much planning. You know, that, that is on the, on, on the worldly level. So, especially if it's an Indian wedding. You know, big fat Indian wedding. So what do you have? What do you have? You have you have to have coconuts, you have to have flowers, you have to have pandits, you have to have this, that, so many things. And then you have to give so many gifts, and then for the for the homa you need fire and sticks and all these things. Gobs of ghee and so many things you need, all kinds of big small things. You know, tubs of vermilion, tubs of turmeric. All kinds of things you need, and rice and all this. And this is the, this is, this is the, this is what so many things are needed just to produce a a, a wedding on the uh, on the empirical scale. Then you you know in these days everybody uh, not to be left behind hires a wedding planner, something that was unknown. You know, thirty years ago at least, 20, 30 years ago at least in India. Wedding planner means someone who is well paid. That's all for not doing much, and uh, they, they somehow coordinate everything, prevent the bride's family and the groom's family from having meltdowns, and then they just uh, produce the wedding and they perform. The, it's as though it's a performance, and then this is this is how it is. Look at how much planning goes. We have who to invite. That has to be planned, and then how to straddle if there are multiple events. Who is going to be involved, invited to all the events? Indian weddings are three, four days long. Who is going to be involved, uh, involved in all the events? Who is going to be invited to only the main event? Who is going to be invited to maybe two events based on how close the people are? And so all this takes a lot of planning, not easy. So there's a lot of planning involved and there is knowledge and creativity involved. There's knowledge involved. Intelligence is involved. Intelligence is especially involved in dealing with two guests who cannot stand the sight of each other. They are friends with you or they are related to you, but they cannot handle one another. So then what do you do? You invite one for the wedding and the other for the reception. So all these things have to be managed properly. And there's a lot of planning. So in this example of the wedding, what do we see? We see that there is a lot of raw material needed, which I rattled off before, like a, a gobs of ghee and firewood and this and that and all these things for the homa. There is one laja homa, you need with puffed rice, like rice popcorn, like a popcorn, puffed rice. And then they have to do that immediately after the wedding is done. And then so all that is, the, that's the first homa the, the, the couple does together. And then there is a pujas and there's all these things, so many things. So like this, so there is the raw material. The material has to be purchased. And then not to mention for the cooking, how much? You know, you do it, uh, 50 kilos of pumpkins and all these things to feed all these people. And so many multiple meals have to be planned. And the same thing cannot be repeated. And you have to have new menu all the time because, of course, there is a sizable number of population that is coming to all the four days. <laughs> so you have to make sure that, that after the wedding, nobody says they just gave us leftovers. So nobody should be uh, talking like that. And so that has to be planned. And then how to keep uh, people who hate each other from, uh, from seeing each other, that has to be planned. So there are two aspects. There is, there is the raw materials needed. And then there is the planning needed. This is our wedding jagat. Okay. Same thing with the jagat. The jagat also is, you know, has uh, what I talked about all the names, forms, shapes, sizes, and beings and things in it. Characharatmakam, Characharatmakam jagat. 
so this jagat is full of unmoving and moving things and it's just a very interesting place full of things this is the first uh, the first thing that we see about the jagat the second thing that we see is that there is knowledge in it just like in the wedding we have to keep people away who do not like each other and we have to exercise some planning and then or not only that kind of planning then sometimes you know they might be two youngsters this also happens in the indian wedding there are two youngsters who are refusing to get married and the parents of course the families have other plans and then they are refusing to meet other eligible bachelors and what are they called bachelorettes okay and then so they are refusing to meet so the parents and the families make a plan and then independently these pros prospective people are invited these prospective people are invited and then accidentally they meet and it is hoped that accidentally they will like each other and <laughs> accidentally they will get mar married <laughs> marriage is an accident you know in more ways than one anyway so then so, so this is the hope all right of the of the family and sometimes it works also and the youngsters go away thinking oh it was our idea we independently liked each other and this is how it happened so like this so the marriage is a place to keep people away and also bring people together and so to the jagat think about all the people who are married <laughs> you know how how did they end up getting married and if you ask anybody's marriage story it will be very 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 interesting be very very interesting and one such one such story uh, somebody told me that uh, they they went uh, you know the, the, the this this man told me this so he and his parents and his younger sister they were invited to go and meet and greet this uh, family who had an eligible uh, uh, girl of a marriageable age and then first the horoscopes dated in the astrologer's house and and then when that went very well and the horoscopes were uh, wonderfully matched then what then the people said okay it's time for a meeting and this was before the days of gps and cell phones and all this so this this family this family of four went to this people's house and then there they were just received so beautifully and they were talked to, you know they talked very nicely and the groom the prospective groom and the prospective bride really liked each other and the families clicked wonderfully very nice they did have a phone but their landline was not working it was dead which is the fate of landlines in in many parts of india most of the time and so it was not working and it, there were no cell phones in that time no gps nothing so anyhow they just went and they liked and they fixed the date of the marriage and everything they had a wonderful time and they fixed a time for the bride's family to come and visit them all this was done and then, then they went away half an hour later <laughs> then <laughs> another groom prospective and on the and his family turned up at the door and these people were flummoxed they said which house are you looking for no 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 we uh, we uh, we here we we talked and this is the alliance and everything like that he said no we already did the alliance and what is your name and then when they found out the name they felt so bad but by this time it was already done already finished The, the marriage had been fixed with accidentally with somebody else accident to us but for bhagwan this was what it was they just made the first the 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 supposed people who this this girl was supposed to marry they made the bhagwan made them lose their way and go round and round in circles by which time the other family who also lost their way got got together so this is this is how it is and it's to us it seems like coincidence serendipity and accident and oh do you want to hear a funny story like this we think but it is not an accident at all that means there is knowledge behind each and every every Uh, breath of air 
in each inhalation there is knowledge in each exhalation there is knowledge and there is knowledge everywhere in between in every kumbhaka when you hold the breath between the uh, the inhale and the exhale there is knowledge when you hold the breath after you exhale vechaka also there is knowledge it's all knowledge the whole world is nothing but knowledge and seen from the standpoint of knowledge the the the, the, cause, the cause from the standpoint of all knowledge is called nimitta karana nimitta means what is the cause the, the intelligent cause or the knowledgeable cause the cause in the form of the knowledge is called nimitta kar and seen from the standpoint of the raw material think about the wedding example again seen from the standpoint of the raw material it is called upadana kar upadana you know when the upa samipe tishtva adiyate you know the, 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 that which 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 remaining right there gives its give lends its form and presence and all these things so it is upadana kar nimitta karana the intelligence and the upadana karana the the raw material so from the standpoint of the, the, the you know so this is the uh, the upadana karana is the creative force and that which has brought this the raw material into all these shapes and sizes and colors and this beautiful uh, this beautiful picture called the jagat and the nimitta karana is the guiding knowledge principle uh, which which uh, uh, works in tandem with the upadana karana and brings out a wonderful show of an orderly jagat which is all knowledge from the standpoint of the um, you know from the standpoint of gen gender the nimitta karana is is seen as ishvara masculine and the feminine is is the raw material upadana karana which i think you know is is uh, is a fine way to look at it but then we, there is a caveat it is not male and female because if we make this mistake then you know then there are all these strange ways of uh, looking at nimitta and upadana karana then they say oh the female is this unbridled uh, power and then the male has to control otherwise the power will go or right that's not what it is the power is not separate from ishvara ishvara's power is what makes ishvara ishvara otherwise we we talk about brahman which is one's own swarupa which does not really create which cannot act so then the maya or the the maya means all knowledge from the standpoint of ishvara and because from the standpoint of the jiva we cannot fathom this maya I and mean, in fact we are under the spell of maya so it has another name from the standpoint of the one who is reading about maya agnyanam that's what it is agnyan so this uh, this avidya so this avidya is is not avidya <laughs> avidya cannot be avidya from the on the collective level if it is avidya how can it create how can ignorance create ignorance cannot create anything other than confusion ignorance is not a creative force knowledge is a creative force and that knowledge along with the power and the raw material together is called ishvar so we cannot separate the two and say the male is dominating the female and then all these things and the female needs to be liberated from the male all this is just a, a, a very kind of a you know it's a waste of time to look at like look at it like this it's a huge waste of time and we, we must not do that we must not do that at all so now what, what, what do we see we see something very wonderful so the upadana karana and the nimitta karana are together really and they throw this buffet called the jagat full of all kinds of things to look at to smell to taste and to delight the senses this is the this is the uh, this is the uh, this is the example and this is this is how the twofold causes of creation this is just for our understanding we separate it if we separate it it is for our own understanding and our own growth in seeing this chakra otherwise there is no need to separate masculine feminine like that when it is inseparable actually and so now let us see uh, the verse here 
And then here, the, uh, the, the verse is very ingenious because it, uh, um, it deals with the Nimitta Karana and Upadana Karana in a slightly unusual way. And let us see what that is. So now verse number 14 is, uh, um, is Nimitta Karana, Nimitta Karana Vichara. It can be deemed. An enquiry into the intelligent cause of the universe. An enquiry into the knowledge which is the force that, uh, you know, which is the force that guides the universe, the knowledge, uh, etc. So then, uh, but it does it with a little bit of a twist. Agnana Prabhavam Sarvam. Sarvam means Jagat here. So this Jagat is what? It's a product of Ajnana. Prabhavam means it is forcefully come into being from uh, as a product, a byproduct. <laughs> a byproduct of Ajnana. Ajnana. A toxic byproduct of Ajnana. Who's Ajnana? Don't say Ishwara's Ajnana. No, no, Ishwara is all Jnana, and that Maya Shakti is Jnana Shakti. No. Who's Ajnanam? Jeeva's Ajnanam. Prabhavam. Prabhavam means forcefully born. Means ejected out of the womb. <laughs> forcefully born. And then the Jagat is forcefully born. How? Because of my own Ajnanam. Very intelligent way of putting this. Ingenious discussion of Nimittakar. The Jagat is born because of my Ajnana. And I am in this Jagat. The Jagat is born. See, it's usually how we say, I am born because of Ajnana. The Jeeva says, I am born because of Ajnana. Here, the author is very, very, uh, uh, what is that, you know, uh, extremely uh, informed, very, very erudite. And the author says, no, 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 you, the jiva is not born due to Ajnanam because the Swarupa of the jiva is what? Ishvara. So then, what is born? <laughs> born the person subscribing to the newsletter called Ajnanam. What happens? The Jagat is born. Born means what? Separate. When the child is born, then the child is separate entity from the mother, no longer part of the mother, no longer a potential. It is leading, it is supposed to be leading a separate life. It is born. So then here, when the Jagat is born, who is it born for? The Jiva. The Jagat is born for the Jiva as a result of the Ajnana of the Jiva. This has to be understood properly as a result of the Ajnana of the Jiva. How does the Ajnana of the Jiva give rise to the Jagat? It wasn't I already born into a Jagat that was pre-existing me. How can you say the Jagat is born because of my Ajnana? That is not fair. How can you say that? <laughs> we can say that because there is a very wonderful link. And there is an ex excellent link. And what is the link? The link is in one's own view and the understanding of the Jagat as a separate entity from myself, from Ishwar. So the Jagat is not born. That's why the word Prabhavam is here used. The Jagat is not born. <laughs> What is born? The Jagat as separate entity from me. That notion is what is born. So the notion that the Jagat is separate from me is born due to my Ajnana. Just like in the dream, the notion that the dream Jagat is separate from me is also born in the dream. In the dream, I relate to the dream Jagat. There are tables, there are chairs, there is a swimming pool, there is a party, there are people, there are food products. Everything is there in the dream. And I experience it very, very, very 
vividly as though it is real. I experience it vividly as though it is real. I experience it as separate from me. Here I am in my dream jagat. I am swimming. I am flailing. I am drowning. Now I am being rescued. Now I am being given CPR. All these things. The nightmares of the dream. You know the, the dream jagat. Are vividly experienced. The person is thrashing around in the bed. Uh, and thinking that oh my god I am drowning. And a good Samaritan wakes them up and says, no, you are not drowning. This was a dream. Oh, thank God. Oh, really? It was a dream? Oh, wonderful. Thank God. This is, you know, one is relieved to be woken up. And who is this good Samaritan? The good Samaritan has a name, Guru. Guru. The Good Samaritan stands for the Guru who wakes up the flailing Jiva who because of Atma Ajnanam believes the Jagat to be separate from herself, separate from himself, separated. Okay. And so let us look at this verse again. Very interesting. Uh, because it's a very ingenious way. Nowhere have I seen the uh, discussion of this uh, uh, what is that called? This Ajnana, I mean, this Nimitta Karna in this way. So, Ajnana Prabhavam Sarvam. Sarvam Idam and Sarvam, these words are always used for the Jagat. Ajnana Prabhavam. This Jagat as a standalone, a standalone entity capable of giving me grief, capable of swallowing me up, capable of making me upset, is the product of Ajnana. Then, on the contrary, what happens? Jnanena praviliyate. Praviliyate means is resolved, is dissolved. Pranaya. So, uh, so, so from, from the laya, viliyate. Pra plus vi plus liyate. That's it. So, jnanena praviliyate. So, the laya, the dissolution of this jagat as a separate entity capable of giving me grief is resolved and happens because of knowledge. What kind of knowledge? What other knowledge is there other than self knowledge? Self knowledge alone is there, nothing else. So, ajnana prabhavam sarvam jnanena praviliyate. Jnanena eva, we can even add Prabhidhi. So this must certainly not be understood as, oh, the Jagat is a, the Jagat is just like a dream, which is a, it is an appearance. And then when I have Atma Jnanam, what will happen to the appearance? It will go away. Just like what? Our stock example. What is our stock example? Rope, snake, snake rope. So, in the light of the recognition of the so-called uh, rope, so-called snake, and that the snake is just a product, a byproduct of my own ajnana and fear, when I recognize that this snake is not really existence, what happens? It goes away, leaving the rope and, and uh, uh, leaving the uh, the the aropa meaning the the whole uh, the, the the projection projection I understand it's a projection because the projection has gone away. This is called a dhyasa, a mistake. I mistook the rope for the snake, and then when I understood my mistake, then it praviliyate. What praviliyate? <laughs> The snake is gone. Jnane, eh? snake praviliyate. Sarpaha praviliyate. Then when Sarpa is gone, then what is left? The Raju, the rope is left for me to appreciate as Yathartha Jnanam, as the truth of the snake, as the rope is exactly as it is. So now, so the Jagat as a separate entity, the notion of the Jagat 
as a separate entity goes away in the light of Vedanta Shastra, exposure to knowledge, etc., then what remains? Goes away. Jagat goes away, right? Only I remain. Is I. that correct? <laughs> and ish. Oh, Jagat doesn't go away. This is also Adhyasa, but it's a different kind of Adhyasa known as Jnana Adhyasa. Jnana Adhyasa. Just because you know the reality of the Jagat, it doesn't have to go away. It doesn't go away. It need not go away. What goes away is your Ajnanam. What goes away is your notion that the Jagat is separate from you. That's enough for it to go away. Because then, even though the Jagat is there, it cannot cause any problems. And neither do you need to wish for it to go away. You don't need to wish for make the Jagat go away. No. A huge waste of time trying to make the Jagat go away. Please don't try. Because it's not going to go away. And why is it not going to go away? <laughs> karta is not you. Ishvara is the Karta. The only one who can make the Jagat go away is Ishvara. It, it, even then it doesn't go away. It, it, it resolves it into Ishvara. That's all it is. Just like your dream Jagat resolves into you upon waking, this Jagat also resolves into Ishvara. So, to speak. so there are two kinds of mistakes. Uh, um, there are many kinds, but two we can discuss here. Two kinds of adhyasa, mistake, projection. In the first instance, it is called adhyasa. When you understand the projection and when you withdraw the projection, then that uh, you know the the, uh, the 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 uh, the thing that is the the, the the thing that is projected goes away. The object of the projection goes away and then leaving only the adhishthana, the source that gave rise to the projection behind. So snake rope is one example, shuktika and uh, raupya is another example. See, raupya means silver, shuktika means uh, this uh, mother of pearl. So there is a mistake and then the silver goes away, leaving behind the mother of pearl. Snake goes away, leaving behind the, uh, the rope. Similarly, you cannot say, now that I know, now that I know that I am non-separate from Ishvara, the Jagat goes away, leaving for me to play with Satchidananda Atma. So the Satchidananda Atma, which is the source of all projections, every creation, etc., etc. So it's all come from the Atma. So now I find Atma on the beach, just like I find the mother of pearl on the beach. No, not at all. Not at all. Doesn't happen. Does not happen that way. Jagat is as it is. And we have many other local examples also of Jnana Dhyasa. And uh, so this is the second kind of mistake where the projection does not go away. You see through the projection and understand that it's an apparition. It's an apparent reality. It's not as absolute. Like when you put a pencil in a glass of water, it appears bent, but it is not the reality. The appearance doesn't go away. Just, you know, just because you know that. And okay, now I know the pencil is straight. I took it out, it is straight. Then I put it back in the water. Will it be straight? No, it will bend because of laws of refraction. Similarly, sunset. Everybody knows there is the sun does not set and neither does it rise. But yet that does not stop us from climbing up a hill to witness the sunrise and to delight in the sunrise. So the apparition of the sunrise, the appearance of the sunrise continues even though you have, you have been soundly instructed in geography and you understand the sun is not rising. Even though there are children's tales that the sun is on a splendid chariot with seven colored horses, the, the uh, uh, colors of the rainbow uh, flying across, riding the horses across the sky from east to west. These are all fairy tales for children. But the sun is not moving at all. He was the appearance of moving. And so this is Jnana Dhyasa. You can still enjoy the sunset, 
even though you know the sun is neither setting nor rising you can enjoy the appearance when you know the reality so the appearance of the jagat as a separate entity from you is the product of atma ajnanam and when there is atma jnanam then sarvam praviliyate jnanena it is not that the jagat goes away <laughs> jagat is here to stay okay and for all those people especially who don't understand this and this is very common in academia that they say oh shankara is maya vadi means he is just talking about the disappearance of the jagat and i want the jagat i want to live in the jagat i don't want the jagat to disappear don't worry it's not going to disappear <laughs> nothing is going to disappear except your atma ajnana only <laughs> only your ignorance is going to disappear okay that's all and when the ignorance disappears the jagat is going to be a much more favorable place because you are no longer needy that's what it is you are no longer needy and you are no longer depending on the jagat to fulfill your needs because you are in the discovery that the jagat is a projection you have understood yourself as that unmovable unshakable force which is the truth of the jagat which is the, which is what the second line is going to tell us you have understood yourself as whole full free complete and not needing anybody to do anything for you and you're not approaching the jagat with a desperation give me give me give me give me give me give me this give me that give me that <laughs> and so when you're not approaching the jagat with a desperation the jagat is very very pleasant just like when you you know if you want to make a friend and then what do you do the first day you meet them for coffee you start asking them all kinds of things give me this give me that you know why, why, why can't we do this together yes i want this i want that and then what when you have assured that there is no there are no more coffees why because the person is off coffee no coffee okay and then the person gets <laughs> tired of you in one coffee itself and, and the person says okay uh, and the person makes a little note mental note or a physical note in their diary next to their phone, next to your phone number h m o oh, his majesty her majesty no such thing high maintenance <laughs> high maintenance so if one is a high maintenance individual then it's very difficult to find peace in the jagat because one is needing and expecting things and expecting everybody to take care of oneself and needs to be dealt with by each and every person and makes their presence known through they are they are also throwing their own projection there is a vikshepa there a personal vikshepa and what is the vikshepa there is a vikshepa of all kinds of projection there is a projection of one's own needs one's own fears one's own you know, childhood issues i wasn't treated well okay so what should <laughs> why is that my problem you have to treat me well to make up for all the years of me not being treated well <laughs> what kind of a logic is this you have to treat me well why because i wasn't treated well that's not my problem i don't have to treat you well at all i don't have to treat you poorly i certainly don't have to make it a point to go out of my way to treat you well and so that that's what I, that's what any person passing person thinks but then if one uh, approaches the jagat and all the things and people therein with the force of this neediness which is the which is the by product of atma ajnanam which makes me see the jagat as a as a raw material as a cow to be milked all the time as a milch cow and then if i see the jagat as a milch cow then that cow is going to run away <laughs> very fast and so so therefore the gnanam is, is makes makes one object you understand the jagat is there to appreciate but really i'm not dependent on the jagat in fact it's the contrary the jagat is dependent on that satchidananda atma that self aware existent Uh, uh consciousness which is limitless which is the truth of i the jagat is dependent upon that in fact the tables are turned and one is 
eminently more cheerful. And when one is cheerful, the Jagat is a lovely place to be. Try it, you will like it. And so the next, uh, next line is also very, very interesting. Very beautiful understanding. Uh, this is the Nimitta Karana. Uh, jagat, jagataha Nimitta Karana Vicharaha. So the first line we have seen. Then second one. Hmm. Sankalpaha Vividhaha Karta. Karta. So then he Vichara. Vicharaha Soyam Idrishaha. Idrishaha Vicharaha Saha Ayam. This, this is the kind of inquiry that should be done. So, uh, and the second one here. So, Ajnana Prabhagam Sarvam Jnanena Praviliyate. So, the product of my own Ajnanam, which projects the Jagat into myriad shapes and forms, is resolved. Shapes and forms that are potentially fulfilling my need. We have to act at that. So, the concept of the Jagat as separate, objectifiable and uh, eternal, all these things, which, which it is not, which it is certainly not eternal, and that it is here to fulfill all my needs. This is the mistake. And once this mistake is removed, the Jagat becomes a very, very, very pleasant and fun place to be. Lots of fun. Okay. And then, Sankalpaha. So where is this Jagat come from? It is the product of Vividhaha Sankalpaha. Of manifold sankalpas. Manifold sankalpas. Sankalpa means just the the the, uh, the desires. So the jagat is a product of desires and intention. Sankalpa also intention. Sankalpa also kama. Sankalpa uh, sankalpa paf prabhavan kama tyaktva sarvan asheshataha. Sixth chapter, twenty-fourth verse. So, like this, even in the Bhagavad Gita, the so sankalpa and kama are put together. So, so this sankalpa is includes kama. The intention comes from desires. So, vividha means various kinds of sankalpas are there. Who is the author of these sankalpas? Let's call that person karta. Karta. Means the author, the agent of all the sankalpas is Karta. And here is the cleverness of the, the cleverness of, of the uh, author here. Sam Shankaraji. Very clear. He does not say who is the Karta. He could have easily said, Ishvara is the Karta. No, he does not spell out the Karta at all. And they will be silent on the question of who is Karta? Will the Karta stand up? And of course, if we say, I know, I know Vedanta and I know Ishvara is the Karta. Ishvara is the Karta. After all, even Arjuna was told, Nimitta Bhamatram Bhava Savya Sachin, the ambidextrous Arjuna who could fire off uh, arrows with the left hand as well as with the right hand, equally, with equal precision. He, and and uh, so accomplished he was. And even he is told in the 11th chapter, uh, what is he told? And he is told the following. He is told, you better, uh, you better be, uh, what is that? You better be uh, this uh, uh, a nimitta, an instrument. You are not the doer. Let me be the doer. And we know this. We know the Jagataha Karta, Ishvara, we know this. Ishvara is the Karta, Ishvara is the Nimitta Karana, etc. Right? Wrong. <laughs> Not completely correct. Again, it is, you know, Vedanta 101 versus sophisticated understanding of Vedanta. Vedanta, you know, presents the, the word system, the Jiva as a co-creator along with Ish. Co-creator. Very, very interesting. If you read the Panchadashi, um, chapter 2, chapter 4, it's very, very, very interesting. Both, both those chapters are very interesting. What does the Jiva bring to the Jagat party? And what does Ishwara bring? All these things. 
and we won't go into all that. Though some of them are very, very technical. And then there is, what is that? Even in the Upanishad, there is Saptanna, Saptanna Vidya. And there is seven kinds of foods and five fold is brought by Ishvara and three is brought by Jiva. These are all highly technical and, and metaphorical. But we need not go into all that here. Saptanna Brahmana, there is one chapter in the Brahdarunik Upanishad. So all that we need not look at. We have to only see something that Ishvara cannot create just like that in a vacuum. Ishvara's creation is tailor-made for the jiva. So Ishwari first takes measurements of the jiva. Oh, this is, oh, okay, you are really tall. We need something big for you. You are a big person. And so you have a, what is your karma then if you are going to be a big person? Basketball, basketball player, you are very tall. And then, oh, you, you, you have so many talents and you don't seem to be good for nothing, good for much. Okay, study computer science and then you can just be at home, work from home, be a, be a very nice nerd, harmless and then give, you know, silently contributing to the universe. <laughs> become, a, become a software wala or wali, okay, you become a software person like this. So what does that mean? That the jivas brings his or her own karma into the pot, which has the raw materials for the jagat. Without that, the recipe is not fulfilled at all. The main ingredients, you know, in, in uh, what is that called? In some kind of a mixed rice, whatever it is, kichdi. Main ingredients are dal and rice. So if you just have rice and the dal somebody forgets to bring, it cannot be called khichdi. It cannot be called porridge. It has to have a pongal, whatever you want to call it. It cannot be called that. It has to have a mixture of dal and rice. So you can decide. What is Ishvara? Do you want to make Ishvara rice or dal? You can decide. Doesn't matter. But the other ingredient, which is equally important, just like in the khichdi. So the other ingredient, either the dal or the rice, is the jiva's own karma, which needs to be cooked by Ishvara and given back. Given back. So without the jiva's karma, there cannot be jagat. Because the jagat is tailor-made for each and every jiva, not just human beings. You see, nowadays we need birds that can breathe polluted air. If the birds that have become extinct, uh, this is um, somewhere I read, if the birds that have become extinct now, so many are there which have gone, if they were there now, they wouldn't have been able to survive because they did not have the ability to evolve. So we need highly, uh, you know, uh, birds that are highly adaptable to various street noises and um, planes, drones, all these things which never used to compete with the birds of the past. And so that's why these birds are alone there. They alone made it and the others didn't. Why? Because of the karma of those jivas. So that's why in this jagat there are certain things that we are sharing collectively. Like the three-year never-ending pandemic. <laughs> And, uh, and this, so we are sharing that, all these vaccinations and all these things and this and that and all kinds of things. We are in this shared reality. Why didn't our foremothers and forefathers, they, all those who did not go through the pandemic, why? Because it wasn't part of the collective karma for them to go through this pandemic. Whereas people who were born in 1917, 18, 19, like that, they went through the pandemic. They went through that, what is called the Spanish flu, etc. I find it very interesting. It is never the United States flu. It's always the flu, Singapore flu, bird flu, Asian flu, pig flu, Spanish flu. I want one day to hear, okay, this is, this is homegrown United States flu. They'll never say that. 
so but this is something to think about anyway so this is the this is the reality so we have something in common with people who were born in 1978 and are, who lived around that time and there was one uh, they, they told a story there was the one lady who survived the uh, spanish flu and also survived this pandemic and then finally died 120 years old or 119 years old or something like that in china 116 or something uh, passed away and so this is the this is the reality that okay there are certain things that we will never experience there are certain things that our ancestors never experienced like planes like uh, you know so many innovations computers zip file who knew what a zip file was earlier drop box nobody knew if earlier to another generation you said drop box then we say what box and where do you want to drop it and that's what they will, that's what they will say drop box and uh, you know so many other things go fund me nobody knew nobody knew what go fund me was kickstarter campaign all these things nobody had any idea nowadays all these things big 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 things very big things and we are we are the recipients of this shared reality because it is our karma just like we have collective karma certain things we enjoy together certain things we lament together certain things we make make us say where is this world coming to <laughs> and then just like that everybody has their individual karma as that also certain things with delight certain things with challenge certain things which make one run you know hitchhike in the other direction because one it's so painful that one does not want to face it even in the slightest bit this is the this is the karta so the karta is who the combination of jiva and ishvara and it sounds very funny to say but again it is from the standpoint of atma ajnanam we say combo combo of ishvara and jiva ishvara jiva combo but really there is no combo <laughs> jiva is ishvara with a complex that's what it is equipped with this complex i am unlovable nobody likes me and, and everybody everybody hates me everybody is against me i'm not good enough equipped with the complex ishvara in the form of the jiva also brings certain raw material to the table jiva is also equally a karta because uh, the jiva says create for me a world that commensurates with my karma. I want this karma to be there and I want this to be there and so create this world for me. Tell me how to do this. Do, do this. Help me, etc, etc. And so then the jiva, the jiva brings to the table its own karma and Ishvara, Ishwari, tailor makes that and measures the jiva and gives that kind of a kshetra and who is the karta kshetragya kshetragya chapimam vidhi sarva kshetre shubharata kshetra kshetragya yor jnanam yatta jnanam udakrutam so this is the this is the knowledge if i mistake the kshetra you know, if I mistake myself to be the Kshetra and at the mercy of the field, which is the Jagat, then it is, it is the Ajnana Prabhava. That is why the Jagat, I feel, is out to get me. But here, in the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita and also in the second line of this, one is encouraged to, to understand oneself as Kshetra, to be one with the knower of the field. And then the Jagat looks to be a very, very beautiful and pleasant place. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachyate Purnasya Purnamadag Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Thank you. Thank you. Can we extend the dream metaphor to say for the jnani, the experience uh, of the jagat is like experiencing a lucid dream?
No, we cannot. We need not. The dream metaphor is just the abhinna nimitta upadana karanam. And then next week I'll explain that. And how the upadana is different from nimitta. Okay, it's not to it's not to make it uh, uh, make make it like a dream. Doesn't jagat 